this first tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install Garmin Pilot on your tablet, how to download charts and other documents, how to use some of the basic function of the sectional chart, and finally, what you are going to experience when flying. So let's install Garmin Pilot. So go to the Google Play Store, select the Apps section, and the quickest way is to use the search function and start typing Garmin Pilot. So the application will show up in the list. Just select it. Select Garmin Pilot again here. Select the install. And click Accept here. And this will launch uh, the, the installation of the application. When the installation is complete, let's start the application. The first thing you have to do is to accept the license agreement. This will show only the first time you launch the application. Next, you are getting the What's New pop-up. This shows all the new features added to the latest version. As you can see, we are using version 4.1 for this tutorial. The next things that needs to happen is an initial download of data. Most tablets are Wi-Fi, but if you are using a 3G, 4G capable tablet, I highly recommend to do all the download over a good Wi-Fi broadband connection. Once this download is over, you finally have access to the application. Here I'm using a, a demo mode, so a pop-up window will let me know that I have a 30 days free trial. Just select later here to continue. If you're not sure that you want to invest in this application, this is the best way to try it, and I will show you in another tutorial the different subscriptions that are available. As you can see, by default, you have a basic map showing state boundaries, interstate, and major body of water. So to safely and legally fly, you need to do more download. So let's download some VFR chart and document. Touch the home button to open the main menu and select the download option. This gives you access to the download menu. The left side of the screen shows all the documents you can download. The right side is a download queue and the bottom you can see how much storage capacity is used on the tablet and how much is available. The first group of documents is about navigation and airport information. The second is about chart and procedures and all are referenced like the paper version. The green line that you can see here shows that you are up to date and the line will turn red if you are not. So let's select a few documents here, like the detailed map data. And in the airport facility directory, or AFD, let's download the East Central Edition. Next, let's open the VFR sectional area. Here you have access to a very familiar map showing the US sectional coverage. You can zoom in and out especially if you want to see all states like uh, Alaska or Hawaii. For this tutorial, I'm going to select Cincinnati, Detroit, St. Louis, and Chicago. When done, just touch the arrow in the bottom right corner to initiate the download. The download queue shows the download progress for each selected chart or document. When all downloads are done, you can verify that you have what you need for your fly and make sure all is showing green or with valid dates. Now that the download is done, let's go back to the map view by touching the home button and the map option. Now it's time to do a quick introduction to the VFR sectional chart. The map view is composed of a base map and different overlays that can be configured by accessing the map setting menu. So let's do that by touching the icon on the bottom left corner of the screen. Select the first section, map chart, and let's configure here VFR and sectional as this is what we want. Let's pause here to address something very important. Looking at the screen, it seems like we have the full coverage of the US and if I zoom in any area, it will display the chart correctly. But this is possible because we are connected to the internet. 
as soon as you are taking off, you are going to lose the internet connection, and in this condition, you can only display correctly the charts that you have downloaded on your tablet. Again, to fly your trip safely and legally, you have to make sure you have downloaded the charts and document you need for your fly, including potential alternate airport or route. I will discuss this more in detail when I address the pre-flight checklist of the tablet and the Garmin Pilot apps. So let's play with the zoom function, as it's a very useful capability to access the detail of a sectional chart and something you cannot do with a paper version. You can do this by pinching in and out with two fingers, a very common gesture with tablets, or using the plus and minus button on the left side of the screen. You can also touch the map anywhere to display the radial menu, like on this airport. The radial menu gives you access to different options that change based on what you touch on the map. Let's select the airport icon here to get immediate access to some general information such as elevation, traffic pattern altitude, and so on. Radio frequencies, runway details, and even fuel price. At the bottom of each tab, there is a more information option that you can touch to access the airport browser, where you can get even more detail about these facilities. But let's go back to the map for now. Another option of the radial menu is airspace information, like here on this airport, if you touch the airspace icon, you get detail about the airspace you are in. And you don't have to be on an airport to get this type of information. As soon as you are in a controlled airspace area, the radial menu gives you the option and the information. This function works anywhere there is a class Bravo, Charlie or Delta. Here is another example in this Bravo airspace. This also works on restricted areas or any other special use airspace, like here. However, it provides only altitude information, but not the time of use, the controlling agency, or the frequencies to call, like you can find on a paper sectional. Maybe something that Garmin could add in the future. Sometimes it's difficult to find VOR frequencies on busy sectionals. In this case, just touch close to or on the VOR to get the radial menu and select the VOR icon to get information about this navet. Another missing information here that could be useful is the Morse code. There is much more I could cover here, but I believe the most powerful function of this electronic sessional chart is that they are georeference and when combined with the GPS, it gives you a very useful situational awareness. So let's go see what's happened when we are flying. When in fly, your aircraft position displays an icon on the chart and the pulsing rings around it indicate that an active GPS signal is received. With touchscreen, it's very easy to move things around. So the first things I want to show you is the quickest way to find your position on the map. Just touch the small plane icon on the bottom left side of the screen and the map will center directly on your current position. On the right of the icon we just used, there is another one that will do something very similar but center the map on the complete route. Here we don't have a flight plan loaded, so we are getting a warning message. Let's go back to the map setting menu with the bottom left corner icon and select the own ship route section. This gives you access to different configuration of live information. Personally, I use the track vector with a 5 minutes length but this is up to each pilot to set up what makes sense for you. I also set a two range ring at 5 and 10 nautical miles. I'll touch anywhere on the map to close the map setting menu. You can see now the track vector in front of the plane icon. The tip of the blue arrow shows where the plane will be in 5 minutes based on the current speed and the two white rings show the 5 and 10 nautical mile distances around the plane. This gives you some very good information about where you are, where you are going, and how far you are from different facilities. And again, this can be configured the way you want based on your preferences and also airplane speed. Another very useful set of information are coming with the nav bar that overlays the top of the map page. Each parameter position can be set to what you want, 
There are a total of 22 available navigation parameters that you can assign to any of the 20 available positions on the bar. By default, the first one is the GPS altitude that I usually keep. In the second position, I like to have the ground speed. Next, I'll put the, tr the track, followed by the course. and the estimated time en route to next and finally the estimated time of arrival to next you can scroll the bar left and right to access to more position and configure what you would like to see let's now look at the direct to function if I want to go to the Fremont airport just in front of me I just need to touch the airport, select the direct to icon, select my airport in the list and select activate. The apps immediately calculate the course that assuming no wind, I can use as my heading to go direct to this airport. Check also the nav bar as now my ETE and ETA are calculated. Let's look at another scenario. You are en route to your destination and discover you need to divert to another airport. In this case, use the direct to icon at the top of the screen. This will open the direct to menu. Select the nearest tab to get immediate information about airports around you, distance and direction to each. Here I select Toledo Executive, activate, and the apps calculate immediately the course. That I can just use as my heading to go navigate to this airport. Here the turn took me some time, so I can redo the direct to by touching the airport. Let's move things down a little so I can select the direct to icon. Select the airport and activate. I just need now to adjust my heading and I am on my way. As you can see, my track vector show me that I'm almost 5 minutes to the airport and the ETA and the nav bar is confirming that. One last function I want to show you, going to the map setting menu under the on-ship port section, you select your own ship icon and for example you can use a fighter jet as your plane icon. I'm pretty sure it will not make your plane go faster, but it looks much better. That's it for this first tutorial. If you are not already a Garmin Pilot user, I hope this tutorial will motivate you to try. If you already are a user, I hope you learned something. And please don't hesitate to post your comment on my channel and share your own experience. Thanks for watching.